Water, air, the earth, the stars. Our universe is made up of many different materials. Where could it all have come from? The T2K experiment is working to answer these questions by studying particles called neutrinos. What kind of particles are neutrinos? All materials can be divided into smaller, more elementary components. Atomic nuclei and electrons. Protons and neutrons. Quarks. These are elementary particles, the fundamental building blocks of everything. The known elementary particles are listed in the standard model the basis of our current understanding of particle physics. These particles fall into two categories, those which make up matter and those which mediate the forces between matter particles. Neutrinos are some of the particles which constitute matter. They come in three flavors, the electron neutrino, the muon neutrino, and the tau neutrino. Neutrinos are the only fundamental matter particles we know of which do not have an electrical charge. Their name comes from the word neutral, which means that something has no electrical charge, and the Italian suffix eno, which means little one. So the name neutrino means tiny electrically neutral particle. Several hundred trillion natural neutrinos pass through our bodies every single second and we never even notice their existence. Neutrinos are the most elusive particles we know. There are many different sources of neutrinos. Neutrinos come from stars, including the sun. They are made by cosmic ray interactions in the atmosphere and come from nuclear reactors, to name a few. Scientists have been studying neutrinos using all of these sources. In 1987, the Kamiokande experiment succeeded in observing neutrinos from supernova 1987A. Professor Masatoshi Koshiba, the leader of the experiment, won the Nobel Prize in Physics for this work in 2002. Experiments using beams of neutrinos from accelerators traveling hundreds of miles before being studied have been a focus of research for the past decade or so. Physicists found that they needed well-understood neutrino sources that they could manipulate at will. The first such experiment was called K2K, a neutrino beam produced at the KEK Accelerator Laboratory in Scuba was sent towards the Super Kamiokande detector located in the Kamioka mine in Hida City. Hence the name KEK to Kamioka or K2K. The purpose of the experiment was to study neutrino oscillations, which is a mysterious phenomenon in which neutrinos of one flavor convert to other flavors of neutrino while they are traveling. Neutrino oscillations had first been discovered in experiments using natural neutrinos from the upper atmosphere. In 2004, K2K physicists confirmed that neutrino oscillations also occur in an accelerator neutrino beam. It is only possible for neutrinos to oscillate into other flavors if they have mass. Mass is a measure of how much a particle weighs. In the standard model, neutrinos have zero mass. However, the existence of neutrino oscillations confirmed to us that neutrinos have very tiny but non-zero masses. There are many different possibilities for neutrino oscillation such as from muon neutrinos to tau neutrinos and from electron neutrinos to muon neutrinos. Experiments all over the world have studied a lot of these oscillation modes. However, until recently, oscillations from muon neutrinos to electron neutrinos had remained unseen. To search for this never-before-seen type of neutrino oscillation and to study in detail other properties of neutrinos, a new experiment began in 2009. This is the long baseline neutrino oscillation experiment from Tokai to Kamioka called T2K. This is J-Park, the Japan Proton Accelerator Research Complex facility in Tokai in Ibaraki Prefecture. 
Here, scientists produce an artificial beam of muon neutrinos from a proton beam. Let's take a look at the T2K experiment in more detail. J Park consists of three accelerators one linear accelerator and two circular accelerators, the rapid cycling synchrotron and the main ring. Using these three accelerators in quick succession, protons are accelerated to 99.98% of the speed of light. Protons are then extracted from the main ring and are bent toward the direction of Kamioka using superconducting magnets. The protons are then fired into a target made of graphite, which causes the generation of a huge number of particles called pions. These pions then need to be focused in the direction of Kamioka. This focusing is performed using three so-called magnetic horns, which are specially shaped electromagnets. After passing through these magnetic horns, they travel down a 100 meter space called the decay volume. In the decay volume, the pions decay, producing muon neutrinos as a product. The first set of neutrino detectors is situated 280 meters downstream of the target. These detectors can measure the energies of the neutrinos, the purity of the beam, and its stability. The measurement of neutrinos just after their production allows a detailed comparison to be made once they have completed their journey across Japan. Most of the neutrinos travel without interacting in the first neutrino detector or the Earth through which they pass. 295 kilometers from J Park, the Super Kamiokande detector is waiting for the neutrinos. Located one kilometer underground in the Kamioka mine, more than 10,000 photon sensors view 50,000 tons of pure water. Here, the energy, flavor, and direction of neutrinos can be measured. Although an enormous number of neutrinos are produced at J Park, only a few neutrinos are seen at Super Kamiokande each day. Most of the neutrinos seen are muon neutrinos. However, some of them are identified as electron neutrinos even though the neutrino detectors at the J Park site confirmed that there were no electron neutrinos in the original beam. To look for electron neutrinos among the muon neutrinos, to discover neutrinos oscillating from muon neutrinos to electron neutrinos. That was the first important goal of the T2K experiment. In July 2013, based on data accumulated over four years, the T2K collaboration announced that they discovered oscillations from muon neutrinos into electron neutrinos. In past experiments, the disappearance of muon neutrinos had been observed and had been interpreted as the oscillation of muon neutrinos to tau neutrinos. T2K was the first experiment to find that muon neutrinos can oscillate to electron neutrinos. This is a major milestone in neutrino physics because it is the first discovery of oscillations through the direct observation of the appearance of a different flavor of neutrino, as opposed to the disappearance of the original neutrino flavor. Now that neutrino oscillations have been observed across all three flavors, there are still many properties of these mysterious particles that remain unknown. From 2014, T2K will operate with an anti-neutrino beam instead of the original neutrino beam. Anti-neutrinos are the antimatter counterpart to neutrinos. Matter and antimatter must have been created in equal amounts in the Big Bang and would have annihilated into nothing if matter and antimatter behaved in exactly the same way. Why there is matter left over, the matter that everything is made of is one of the most fundamental questions about the universe we live in. If we find a difference in oscillations between neutrinos and antineutrinos, it will provide an essential clue about the evolution of the universe as we know it. The T2K experiment has been running since 2009. At present, around 500 physicists from 12 different countries participate in the project. The T2K experiment has discovered an entirely new property of neutrinos. 
More dramatic discoveries are expected to come from using an anti-neutrino beam as well as upgrading the J-PARC accelerators. The neutrino is one of nature's most mysterious elementary particles. T2K has already produced groundbreaking results and will continue to bring new insights into the nature of neutrinos. This could lead to new levels of understanding of the universe and how it developed from the Big Bang into what we know today.